Masoka Universe. Well, one from the car for a change. And yeah, Champions League match day three. Wearing PSG, as we will see, PSG did actually quite well against Bruges. And yeah, uh, PSG seems to be hell bent on playing in their white jerseys. I mean, uh, the last two times I kind of understood it because they were the away team. So it made sense that they're playing in the white away jerseys. So um, that was not too much of a surprise, but given that they played also against Real Madrid at home, but I guess it was could have been a marketing point. Anyway, I'm wearing this because every time I talk about PSG, I need to remind everyone how a proper PSG jersey should look like. It's this one, the HDR design. And the good news is, really good news, since PSG is celebrating 50 years, uh, next season, this is a rumor to come back this design for at least one iteration. Nothing against the white jersey, uh, because that one looks really good, I have to say. And it's the look when Nike took over and PSG is one of those. I think Nike and Dortmund were the first two teams that, first two bigger teams that Nike took over. So yeah, uh, they are almost, you, you could say, the original Nike team. And so it makes sense to have this really beautiful white jersey. Uh, it's so beautiful that I'm even thinking about it. Okay, let's get to the games. Yesterday, I have to say, uh, of the two match days, uh, the first part yes, yesterday was kind of underwhelming. And in a way, although I think about it, but almost the biggest matchup uh, between Atletico and Leverkusen and I'm really having a hard time pulling Leverkusen in a big match but at least it's Spain against Germany uh, we had an England against um, Italy matchup so get close also people you know from the names this was the biggest one and that was played at seven and it was a home game in Madrid this doesn't make any sense to me at all but uh, I want to run through it group by group because the one really interesting matchup uh, was Galatasaray against Real Madrid and mainly because everyone wanted to know what's gonna happen with Real Madrid uh, will they finally get their win they finally got their win um, but at first it needed two really good saves from Courtois uh, and Real Madrid fans will say finally he is saving us again or he's keeping us in the game especially the second one early on that was a really good save and then with the first real attacking move Azar uh, picks out Kroos and at first it doesn't seem like he even intended to but when you have a second he really wanted to have uh, get the ball to Kroos who takes a shot that never would have gone in if it took wouldn't have taken a wicked deflection over the defender on the line and it's 1-0 Real Madrid and everything is on their way. They have chances uh, in the second half, namely Azar hits the bar uh, after a nice move, but cannot convert the chances. And in the end, yes, yeah, they hang on, uh, but it was not impressive, but they get their win. And the Champions League campaign is kind of now on track again more or less. I mean, it's still not great, but uh, you know, you're second in the group. Why you're second? Well, because also uh, PSG takes care of Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, PSG takes care of Paris Saint-Germain. Takes care of uh, Bruges. Um, Bruges giving them a little bit of trouble, but uh, wonderful uh, early in the second half. Um, first, I'm not coherent today. I'm sorry. Early in the uh, or midway through the first have a wonderful deep ball to Di Maria who then with a nice assist to uh, crosses over to Icardi who can put an internet and that's exactly what Icardi does. Uh, really very simple passing move due to the high press of Bruges uh, this is the way that you can play yourself out of the high press. Really was an impressive touch and I have to say this day Di Maria he is on fire. 
he is absolutely on fire. If you have seen the um, his performance against Nice, he again um, he helped assist the second goal. Mbappe comes on, makes it uh, two. 2-0 where uh, at least if he didn't get the assist uh, he at least had his feet somehow in there he was the last PSG player to touch it uh, Mbappé then uh, gets the assist on Icardi's third and then again two two times one wonderful slicing assist by uh, Di Maria and another one where he also had the assist but then it was also Mbappé's uh, in, in individual effort so Mbappé adds two more again assists from Di Maria. Uh, the story is of course Mbappé coming on scoring three goals but to be honest uh, Di Maria is outstanding. Every attack went over Di Maria. Uh, really masterful and I thought about it yesterday again if Di Maria would have played the 2014 World Cup final, we would not be talking uh, Germany being champions. We would have that Messi has achieved it all. Um, I think this is how important Di Maria was, uh, was and is. If he is properly used, he's an absolutely outstanding player. Uh, and he is on fire right, right, right now for me. We talk about another player who had an outstanding time for us, but Di Maria is right up there with one of the best performances yesterday evening. So Group A, PSG, then Real Madrid with four points and the other two uh, have... Uh, Gala, Gala has one point and uh, Bruges has two points. So uh, that's how it stands there. Group B, that's the Bayern group, um, where, yeah, Bayern... <laughs> a very weird performance uh, in uh, Greece, uh, Piraeus, uh, they go down 1-0 at the point where they actually had full control of the game and it was kind of a weird, I mean Neuer seemingly saved, saved it but behind the line and the ball really just by millimeters was behind the line. Um, and thankfully they have Lewandowski who has this nose for making goals 10 minutes later it's level and I think they even uh, they then get the 2-1 in the second half so this again Lewandowski uh, where the defense of Olympiakos did not look great uh, Tolisso it's a 3-1 and you say yeah they just have to gotta play at home but no 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 Olympiakos pulls one back and there was an equalizer in there. Uh, Bayern looks like clear leaders now in this group. Domin two dominant performances, one not so good. When playing at Olympiakos is not that easy. However, the performance yesterday will fit right in there with the Augsburg performance with the only difference that this time they got the win. Uh, Spurs kind of uh, get rid of their frustrations by Scoring freely against uh, Jeremena Svesta. I think Kane got the first goal very early. Son uh, makes it 2 2 2 2 nil. I think within 15 minutes or so. Game was done and dusted. Uh, Son adds a third just before the half. Lamela, I think, a fourth. And then Kane a fifth. And that was that. Jeremena Svesta was not really in the game, as to be said. And so, yeah, Spurs put themselves back in contention in that one and actually with the 5-0 eradicate the 2-7 loss at home to Bayern and are now on a level goal difference. So that works out too. Uh, Group C uh, is one where we had an early game between um, Dynamo and Shakhtar Donetsk and it uh, was actually played in Kharkiv. Um, what to say about this one? Uh, I did not see much except this was a super colorful jersey match up again with Dynamo playing in the neon yellow uh, and Schachter with the two ton orange and black uh, pants. Uh, Schachter took a lead that Dynamo could equalize and e Dynamo got a deserved lead through a penalty where Piatov just wrestled down the defender. Uh, but then a wonderful move uh, from all of the Brazilians gets the 2 2. Well, uh, both teams uh, draw. I think it was probably the fair result from all I could tell. Uh, in the other game, Atalanta had the early chances. 
Kim took the lead through Malinowski. Penalty, uh, Fernandinho, a horrible challenge there. And then it was all Manchester City. Within 10 minutes of that, they had turned the game, game around. It was Raheem Sterling. Um, first giving a wonderful assist that Aguero just has to tap in between the legs of the goal, goalkeeper. This was a striker's goal. Then Raheem Sterling uh, is felled in the box, enabling um, uh, Aguero to get his double. And then probably the best attacking move of the evening um, over the side, uh, the, the ball gets to De Bruyne, who plays it nicely to Foden, who has the awareness that Sterling's in a better position to the left. Sterling gets his goal, Sterling gets a third, and he gets a, a second and a third, and it, it's 5 1 for um, City, with Foden actually then we see being sent as end of the with, with a yellow and red, which probably saved uh, Atalanta from more goals. Atalanta actually tries to play with the other teams but a little bit too naive I have to say. Uh, they play much better in Serie A than they play in Europe and I have to say now two away games minus four and then the uh, horrible loss at home. It was not at home, it was in Milan. Uh, to Schachter where they actually deserved the win. Sorry about that but yeah uh, Manchester City and especially Raheem Sterling, the other stellar, stellar performance uh, yesterday. Uh, and then we had Group D, where Atletico Madrid plays Bayer Leverkusen, and Bayer Leverkusen hangs in there, hangs in there, hangs in there. But in Europe, Bayer Le Le Leverkusen is almost too naive, too toothless. And it is of all people Morata who gets a late winner for Atletico Madrid. Nice header. Uh, I have to say I like the jersey much because I like those black Leverkusen jersey, which is a white jersey. It really works well. Uh, and you know Atletico Madrid at home. I, I love this uh, red, white stripes and the blue pants. Really looks nice. But yeah, Atletico Madrid gets a win. Uh, at a point where you thought maybe there will be a draw in there and Juventus has the big chance and then Juventus actually puts themselves in trouble with a really slow performance against Lok where then at one point the Licht decides to go forward and uh, does not track back leaves the entire defense in disarray Bonucci has to clear it out, cannot make it and out of that mess uh, Lok takes a 1-0 lead kind of surprising and it seemed for the longest of times that they cannot find a breakthrough. Um, Juventus got two free kicks and can please anyone tell Ronaldo that he's not the best free kick taker on that team. Leave the balls to Pjanic. I, I mean I loved it how the, uh, in, the, in the second half there was a free kick and the commentator said now it's high danger time, high danger time because here Ronaldo is stepping up and you know exactly this is Pjanic's position. Pjanic can do this much better. Uh, how Pjanic is uh, living with this, I don't know. If I would be so mad because Ronaldo is the best player on Juventus, but he's not the best free kick taker. He might not even be in the top three in that team. Uh, Pjanic is sensational. Whenever he can take, he will take. I would say Pjanic and Dybala are better free kick takers than uh, Ronaldo, who just with pure, pure force slams it in there. Yes, if it goes in, it's spectacular, but it's not the best that he can do. Uh, I'm serious. And it is not Ronaldo who turns around, it's Dybala who in short succession makes two goals. Um, I think the first one was a really great strike, second one was kind of a, tap, a little bit more of a tapping. I might have them flipped now. I didn't see the highlights again and, uh, you know, there were many goals scored at the same, same same time, so it goes a little bit. So, but yeah, Juventus turns it around against Lok and gets the win. And now also seven points on top of the table together with Atletico Madrid. And uh, Leverkusen can get the most third place. So yeah, uh, and then Group C, I didn't mention, but you get it anyway on the side here. Uh, that um, it's City, Zagreb and Schachter, I think, are level uh, on points. And Atalanta is also ran. Um, also in the battle, which also determines the order in which I will do my weekly review. I think Germany is now slightly ahead. 
at, uh, yeah, it's still slightly ahead of Italy. Uh, we have Inter Dortmund and Roma Gladbach uh, this week that could basically uh, put Germany back safely in a third spot um, or turns the other way around. Let's see how that would go. Let me know what you thought about the games yesterday. Today we actually have a lot more interesting, as I said, uh, Dortmund and Inter are clashing. I also look forward to Salzburg playing at home to Napoli. Uh, it's a whole lot more exciting. I'm not sure how much I will actually see. Uh, I hope I will get to it, but if not, I will watch highlights tomorrow morning. So let's see how, how, how that goes. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, drop comments below to film, fill in any gaps that I had. Sorry for not being very coherent and I will talk to you soon tomorrow. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.